So, hi everyone. Um, let's start with introductions. I'm Leon Brockard. I'm a sales engineer at Fastly. I'm uh, David Strauss. I'm CTO at Pantheon. And I'm Rudy Gregar. I'm the infrastructure manager at the Drupal Association for Drupal.org sites. And we are here to talk to you about the value of CDNs and caching and all the things that uh, go beyond uh, the origin, which assuming, uh, based on the assumption of you being here at DrupalCon, is probably Drupal. Uh, a lot of you probably know that uh, Drupal takes a long time to render pages, at least in terms of computer time. Um, it takes, even a great site takes a few hundred milliseconds uh, to render pages. And uh, a lot of caching is about avoiding that as much as possible, both to reduce the amount of time your users wait on pages, as well as, um, as, well as uh, make your origin resources extend further. That uh, um, if 99% of things are getting held, handled by your edge cache, then only 1% of your overall traffic needs to be handled by your origin. Uh, did you have uh, some topics to start us off? Or? Um, sure, so I'll start on, um on a website that all of you visited before, Drupal.org. That's hosted on Fastly, but why is that? Uh, well, uh, a couple of years ago, um, Drupal.org was experiencing all kinds of latency issues and uh, slowdowns and uh, basically got hired on by the Drupal Association full time to kind of like work on making it work and not doing that. Um, making it faster. So uh, what I found was that our uh, VLAN that we have outgoing with the origin servers for Drupal.org was hitting its 30 megabit cap every five minutes or so, which was coordinated with updates.drupal.org and people's crons being on about every five minutes or so being a big spike. On the hour, definitely a bigger spike, and we were dropping packets. Um, so kind of initially pulled out a CDN and saw some reduction uh, in the number of like drop packets and things, and things are getting better. Uh, but it was kind of like a quick, like, oh, things are on fire, we need a CDN. Went in, put one in place, uh, but it was very, uh, time. it was a time-based CDN. So uh, every 30 minutes, the CDN would purge whatever it had in its cache, and and we would recache and take the origin. So it was kind of a middle ground from where we ended up uh, in this last year with Fastly. Uh, and with Fastly, we're doing basically that, but a much better job of it. So uh, all of the packaging that's happening on Drupal.org for new releases, for uh, updates like security data, that sort of thing, uh, we're dynamically purging with Fastly's API when we build and package releases so that those cached items are only dynamically purged when there's a new release available. So only new requests are hitting our origins and existing requests stay cached for up to a year in Fastly's cache. And we've combined that with Fastly's uh, origin shield feature, which is uh, some fancy varnish configuration. It's distributed varnish in a sense. Um, so the, the VCL's there uh, to do origin shielding uh, and keeps the request fast. Uh, this is actually updates at Drupal.org uh, and Fastly's dashboard that you're looking at right now. So uh, if you wait until a five minute mark here, um, it should be any second now, uh, you'll see a big spike and things will come through. But most of the hits are happening with the 99 ish percent hit ratio, so there's not a lot of requests actually hitting our origin, and our origin uh, bandwidth is only, I mean, we're under 10 megabit or so um, at any given time with, with all of this uh, happening right now. So uh, that's sort of how like we went into the down into the Fastly rabbit hole. We were already using Varnish on Drupal.org for uh, all the sites and services that we were running, uh, so the, the move to Fastly was pretty natural, like the VCL's there, we can upload VCL uh, that we have that's custom, that sort of thing. And overall, it's been a really great experience um, just in being able to manage the service that way. On, uh, on Pantheon, we've mostly worked with Fastly for uh, very large uh, customers and networks of sites where they need to have uh, points of presence, they need to be able to handle huge traffic spikes. Some of the sites on the platform are top 100 websites, and when they get in the news or at the top of Google results, uh, they're just going to get a giant load of traffic. And it's not an attack, it's just legitimate traffic that people are trying to load. Uh, and then um, it also compounds with a lot of the situation of the modern web in 2016. Um, how many of you have heard about um, Google's changes for PageRank with HTTPS? 
Okay, so a sizable amount of the crowd. Um, but delivering things like that is not just free where you just throw it onto your website and you have no impact on performance. Every time you introduce a service like that, uh, especially modern HTTPS and TLS negotiation, it's making multiple round trips to the server. And in a lot of cases, if you're just implementing HTTPS on your origin boxes, then if I'm pulling the site up on my mobile device, it is going all the way back to the origin servers for multiple round trips before it even requests the page from the server. Uh, and uh, now that HTTPS is pretty necessary for having sites max out their page rank and other analytics, uh, and even providing things like AMP pages to Google so that you get accelerated mobile rendering, uh, it becomes more and more important to optimize that. And we've done that for some of our customers with um, deploying CDNs, including Fastly. And uh, by having different points of presence around the world, instead of uh, a device that's visiting the site doing multiple round trips all the way to an origin in, say, Chicago or Virginia or something similar, they just do it versus the local point of presence, which Fastly has dozens around the world, uh, where um, it can do that negotiation. And then um, Fastly can maintain a much more cached encrypted connection back to the origin so that uh, mobile devices just have a much better experience uh, in terms of latency for requests and ability to scale out that traffic without having the origin bear the brunt of it. And rather topically, um, HillarydClinton.com, which is all HTTPS, was hosted on Fastly um, and was mentioned during, during the debate last night. And we had a huge spike on our <laughs> network. It was very interesting. Um, so I'd like to take, take a little step back. Does, does everyone know what a CDN is? Because we've mentioned the term before. So it's, it's a cache. Uh, we, have, we cache um, your content close to the users around the world. So your, your request has to go less far. So, you're, so if you're a user is in Australia, but your servers are in Frankfurt, then you can get a cache content from, from this, our servers in Australia, and from Sydney, for example, rather than having to go all the way back to the origin. And we're based on open source software called Varnish. How many people have heard of Varnish before? <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's great. Um, so Varnish is, is open source for S-Proxy. Uh, you can basically take your, your Varnish from, from your home server uh, from, and, and put it onto Fastly. Um, and within about three seconds, we'll push it all the way worldwide. So you can have all sorts of very clever configuration. But most of the time, you don't need to do that. Um, the Drupal plugin for, for Fastly is just the right thing, especially for Drupal 8 with cache tags. Um, Drupal 8 is much, much clever at caching and, and deciding de where dependencies are. So if you change one page, uh, then um, uh, one object to one page, then uh, Drupal, the plugin will send invalidation to Fastly and invalidate all the pages which have that piece of content on within hand, around 150 milliseconds. So um, newspapers, users like The Independent in the UK, um, because they want to have the up-to-date up news. And even if you have a highly interactive site, there are lots of assets like CSS, JavaScript, images, et cetera, that are getting loaded on every page load. Uh, uh, even for the authenticated users, and those are just not varying that much. And um, uh, having a CDN for, say, a user in Australia is the difference between them hopping over the Pacific for every single one of those assets versus them loading 99% of the assets from the CDN and then only going back to the origin, even for a signed-in user, for one request. And so you're only adding in the, uh, the latency of those, say, trans-Pacific or transatlantic um, cables uh, for just that one request. Uh, and that actually provides a pretty good experience for users around the world because most of those requests are just for those assets that will be cached close to them. Um, and with things like HTTP2 now, uh, which is supported uh, as an, by an opt-in system on Fastly, uh, it's possible for devices like mobile devices to roll up those requests uh, into uh, things where they basically are able to use um, a combined HTTP pipeline uh, to efficiently batch uh, those requests to the CDN and pull down all of those dependent assets much, much faster. Uh, it actually uh, takes care of, at a lower level, a lot of the concerns that uh, Drupal has, has tried to solve historically through CSS and JavaScript aggregation by packing those into single files. Uh, HTTP2 allows uh, having those files all be pulled in batches. And even more than that, um, even if you are delivering custom content like that to users, um, interacting with HTTP2, uh, you can actually advise uh, the system that those assets are going to be used or necessary for the page load. And then uh, the, uh, the CDN server can actually push those down to the client, like a mobile phone, uh, before the client even realizes that they're totally necessary for rendering the page. Uh, and that means that 
you're even reducing latency that would normally be incurred with a mobile network because normally it would load the page, it would process it, figure out what assets it needs, and then it's another round trip over the mobile network even if you're going to a local point of presence. HTTP2 allows the push to happen there. Uh, so you're just kind of axing away at latency, everything from TLS negotiation, um, a asset pulling, asset pu uh, um, uh, figuring out what assets are necessary for the page, um, going over transatlantic and transpacific cables uh, for pulling those assets. Uh, and you can, you can knock off hundreds and hundreds of milliseconds from page load times this way. Um, when, when did we want to open the floor? Sure, I think we can get questions at any time. Yeah, um, like w we mostly wanted to keep this as an open floor. Um, I'm also, ha I mean, I know this is a Fastly session. I'm, I, most of these concepts apply to most CDNs you're going to be working with. So uh, feel free to ask about stuff. And I, I can tell you at least how Fastly handles the answers to some of these things. But uh, they're general conceptual issues of web architecture, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we have a microphone because this, this session is getting recorded, um, so I would appreciate if uh, people could use that for asking the questions, or at least I don't think it quite can get passed around. It's not wireless, but All right. um, is this on? I think so. Yeah. Um, just wondering about the PWA SSL, SSL termination point on the CDN. Is the traffic from the CDN back to the origin encrypted? Or? Absolutely, okay. it can be. So I can take this one. So then at that point, there's two, um, there's two connection paths. There's from the user to the CDN and from the CDN to the origin to your servers. And so you terminate, if you terminate on the edge, then either you can use HTTP back to your origin or you can use HTTPS. Um, Absolutely not, because uh, there's no overhead because you keep the connections open for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. So it's actually, it's actually not as bad as you might think. Yeah, it's, it's not nearly as heavy as the device itself, the end user negotiating all the way back to origin. Uh, because TLS, uh, the, the way that the connection is structured, it happens in two phases. Uh, first is this asynchronous phase, which is really expensive for negotiating a shared secret. And then once you have a shared secret, almost any modern device, even a mo mobile phone, is able to process the encryption at wire speed once that negotiation occurs. Uh, but a CDN like Fastly is going to do that negotiation once, and it's going to either keep the connection open or cache the shared secret so that it uh, doesn't have to do, undergo the full setup every time it talks to the origin. Um, even more, moreover, uh, um, Fastly has a neat option where you can uh, put in your own client certificate uh, to authenticate Fastly's connection back to your origin. So if you're really up uh, on how things like X509 work, uh, you can make it a very clean connection back to the origin where you have authenticated with 100% confidence that the connection is coming from Fastly and all the rules you've put in place at Fastly have been applied. So if you're doing things like mitigating an attack or trying to protect your origin, uh, it provides a good facility for doing that that doesn't involve you constantly having to update IP lists uh, tr like the traditional way of validating that something came from a CDN. You would like to ask a question, but the mic is far away. We can just repeat it. We can repeat it. We can repeat it. Okay. Uh, what about uh, authenticated users and the individual blocks on their pages that may have individual information on them? And what about searches? For example, like a complex solar search that is parsed in a string in a URL. How would you make those? Okay, so the question is about, uh, I guess, personalized content. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, personalized content. Pretty much. Uh, do you want me to take it? Sure. Okay. Uh, so there are a few different ways of handling that sort of assembly of a page. Uh, there in Drupal um, 8, uh, we now have something called BigPipe that allows you to pump out that content uh, through a streamed request. Uh, doing uh, Implementing the BigPipe where you put um, ESI at the bottom of the page to basically pull the BigPipe content uh, with Fastly would allow you to have the initial page structure be cached, ship out to the client before Drupal even knows the request is coming in. And then Drupal can handle uh, shipping the customized content through BigPipe as an addendum to that request so that the client still sees it as just one big request where the initial data came in very fast and then the subsequent data comes from Drupal. Uh, other ways of doing it would involve um, separate requests for that content where um, you could have some of the requests cached and some of them go back to the origin. Uh, I, I don't know if you can show the graph on there. You can actually see the hit ratio graph on here which is really showing, um, I mean, this is a particularly exceptional hit ratio because this is very, very, I'm sorry, what? Let me 
switch over here to yeah to a more normal site dynamic. yeah this is a more uh, typical site uh, it's still a very good hit ratio at least in the hit ratio done there um, the uh, a typical site is gonna, still going to have a pretty high one uh, but the reason to pay attention to that is uh, you want to make sure that even with the customization of content that you're not um, uh, skipping the cache. Like one of the common ways to accidentally skip the cache is once you've set up a session, that header comes in, you might have configured Varnish with VCL to say any request coming in with a session ID uh, bypasses the cache. That'll give you a poor kit rate. Um, but you can put a rule into something like Fastly that says for all these static assets, ignore whether they have a session or not uh, um, you could do the same for certain block requests as well if they were dynamically added to the page. Uh, and ultimately, you just want to look at your hit ratio. Another thing you can do is you can configure Fastly to ship its log data out to another service for analysis. And then you can look at what's hitting and missing. Um, and depending on how you configure your VCL, you can even have it hint at why. Uh, and then that can help you optimize the experience for uh, an authentication heavy site. Uh, speaking of that, that log shipping, uh, we use that pretty heavily on Drupal.org uh, because we use those logs uh, for downloads and for like project usage statistics. So all the traffic that's coming into updates tracks like what is being requested for updates. So that's how those statistics get generated. And being able to ship those logs back to us for processing is, is a handy feature. Yep. Uh, another thing I heard you mention was ESI. Does everyone know what that is? Do you want to talk, talk yeah. about that a Yeah, uh, ESI means edge site, edge site include. It's a tag you can put into a page that says, at this point in the page, I want you to seamlessly integrate the response to this URL uh, so that you can hit an initial page. And then what Varnish does is it'll ship out the data until it hits the ESI tag. And then it'll notice, oh, I need to pull this content now. But the rules for that content can be handled completely independently of the main content that it's delivering. So you can ship out a framework, uh, a skeleton page uh, and then use that, uh, I think I was talking to Fabian actually um, two days ago about uh, using that for uh, in to integrate with BigPipe where even for authenticated traffic, the initial part of the page comes cached out of the CDN and then Drupal dynamically handles the subsequent customization of the page. Uh, I don't know of a lot of production sites that are doing this yet. Uh, it's not, I mean, as if for people who were present for the keynote earlier today, uh, um, Big Pipe is still in beta in Drupal 8, but it's uh, assuming it continues to mature, it should enter a stable uh, configuration in Drupal 8.3 or 8.4. So we use, uh, we're on Drupal 7, mm -hmm. uh, and we use off cache yes. when that does the aside. So that's basically the same principle as exactly. Big Pipe. Exactly. And you can totally use off cache with Fastly by, by using off cache's uh, published VCL. Uh, and then that will properly handle the rule set that's necessary for off cache to determine which requests are keyed off of things based on user the user role. Sure. Regarding the caching mechanism that you said, how do you define which part of the page gets cached except the ESI tag or the off cache? I mean, can you give the, uh, the path of the URL or something else? You can use anything you want in Varnish and on Fastly. Um, you can, uh, there are two systems on Fastly for it. There's a rule system that has a GUI configuration where you can put in URL patterns, header patterns, cookie patterns, things like that, uh, and, and make a decision of whether you're bypassing the cache or trying to hit the cache or not. And then also um, you can go, uh, and if you really need to, you can unlock full VCL, which allows you to really actually just write code that is literally has if statements in it to determine how to handle that request. Use and regular expression you can use regex okay. if you want to. And do you mind showing the... Do you want to show the VCL? Sure, I can, like show, I can yeah. pull up the VCL for this. Is the point where you also state the VCL of the page that gets cast? Well, uh, you can. I, I would advise against it. Uh, I, would, I would encourage you to use standard HTTP headers where possible. And uh, Fastly will properly par uh, parse uh, things called cache control headers. Mm -hmm. And um, you also have the opportunity to use something that's called surrogate control headers, which are specifically consumed by something like a CDN and then thrown away. So you can send in one cache control header that goes down to user browsers, and Fastly won't touch it. Uh, and then you can set a surrogate control header to tell the CDN how long to keep the page if you want to do different timings. 
Uh, Drupal directly supports using cache control headers, though, and Fastly will support those out of the box. So a good example of that would be a live blog, where you want people to have the live information. So you make the cache control header for the browser to be very short, say a few seconds, and then you cache on a CDN for a week, but invalidate uh, the, the page on CDN whenever there is new content. So the browsers will keep on getting back to the page, will keep on getting um, a 304 not modified, uh, but when there is new content, they'll get straight away. And when it comes to delivering things like 304 not modified, um, delivering something like Fastly is actually pretty essential to getting that right because if you just deploy your own fleet of varnish boxes, they're going to independently cache the content and they're going to have different IDs for, uh, uh, for when the content was created uh, and the e-tag for the content, which is what the browser prefers to use for validating it. Uh, Fastly does request hashing at a higher level for requests. So, uh, in its, I believe it's in the master VCL, uh, where it determines what servers to send the content to so that if you have a page and it's cached in Fastly, it will always hit that cache uh, on that one, on, on the single system that is responsible for that piece of content. And that ensures that if you're distributing something out and you want to deliver something like 304 not modified so browsers can revalidate their cache, they will efficiently revalidate rather than if you have the fleet of boxes it could randomly hit a different one, and then the browser will, uh, that'll have a different e tag, and then the browser will think, my stuff is too old, and it will have to pull the page down again. Uh, so a, a fleet of varnish boxes is still better than nothing, but um, uh, the kind of hashing that a system like Fastly does will get the hit rates to go even a whole level above that uh, for, for that sort of management. So I was thinking about the, the blog uh, example uh, you stated. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have the option if we use Fastly to invalidate dynamically if someone posts something or, you know, in order for, uh, for the page to be cast on uh, Fastly servers, but uh, in, in dynamically, let's say, get cast for as long as someone writes down a new post. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, something that can be worked out with rules or something like that. Uh, you don't even need, you, for invalidation, you want to use the Fastly module for Drupal. And then that will talk to your fa the Fastly API to invalidate the content. And then that way you can cache the content in the CDN for a long time. And then it hooks into Drupal's um, APIs so that it knows when you create a new node or update a node. And then it tells Fastly, expire this. And Fastly uses uh, this asynchronous distribution model for caching validation that reaches around the globe in usually under a half second uh, to all of the points of presence. I'd say a fifth of a second. But fifth right. of a second? OK. Yes. Question. So just assume I'm using Drupal 8 with all this uh, fancy caching that enabled and why. And I have my DNS pointing to Fastly. Nobody actually gets to my to my Drupal site. Everybody gets to my Drupal site through Fastly or through some CDN. Would you say there will be no need for me to put another cache between Fastly and my Drupal site, or do I still need some other cache? Think about Origin Shield? Yeah. Um, Repeat the question, though. The question yeah. was, uh, if I'm using Fastly and other CDN um, and everyone accesses my site through that, uh, do I need to have additional caching uh, inside for, if, for the site? Specifically Drupal 8. Specifically for Drupal 8. Uh, and I would say uh, no. Outside of, like, for Drupal, um, Drupal will still need to cache and, and do all of its internal sort of caching. But as far as adding another layer of varnish or something like that, uh, when we rolled Fastly out for Drupal.org, uh, we removed our internal varnish completely, removed our load balancers completely, and we're sticking with Fastly's origin shield system and managing all of the edge from Fastly's interface and, and through Fastly. So all the requests, caching, and logic gets handled at Fastly. All of the requests that are hitting Drupal.org from around the world um, flow through the origin shield, which is in Seattle, and then to our data center, uh, which is peered with that um, internet exchange in Seattle. To origin. So all of the requests funnel through a single origin. That origin probably has whatever is being requested. Uh, it does request collapsing, I believe, is a, it does. Is a nice feature. Uh, so if there's requests for the same thing twice, like only one request comes back to our origin, and that has been working beautifully. So I, I would say no. Like you can remove your varnish that's running internally if you're using that. And it's worth noting that this is not a general feature of CDNs, that most CDNs have their points of presence. And when the point of presence misses, it goes all the way back to your origin. And so uh, if you have traffic that's pretty distributed around the world, 
you might have a lot of traffic reaching your origin still and might want to run a cache there. But with Fastly and the Origin Shield, uh, you actually have a cache that is um, that can hit all traffic before it hits your origin, no matter where in the world it's coming from. Right. So you have something which is a big event coming up, and everyone requests the same page or the same object all at the same time. Um, then you'll only get one request to your origin for that, even though thousands of people around the world will, will fetch all the, will fetch all those objects. And, and Fastly can even take it one step further than that with uh, a header that um, that sets an option called stale while revalidate, which means that. Uh, let's say you have a page that's cached for five minutes, and it's five minutes and one second now. Uh, and it might, let's say it's a heavy page in your website that takes a few seconds to generate. You can turn on this thing called stale while revalidate. And what that'll do is Fastly will still deliver the old version of the content until the, the origin has replaced it in the cache. So at, at that five minute and one second mark, it makes the request to the origin. Uh, to get a fresh copy of the page, but the customer or browser does not wait on that to happen. So it does, uh, in addition to the request collapsing, uh, you can even have your users never wait on a page uh, to, um, to freshen if it's a high traffic page and getting a lot of traffic as the site. Um, and we have the VCL for that on screen right now. Yep. Yeah, so that, I mean, this is, this is VCL, if anyone recognizes VCL, um, and that's, that's the option. So for updates, we have 120 seconds still while we revalidate, and if there's an error and it's cached, we just let it serve whatever that update mm -hmm. is. So if the origin goes offline for some reason, uh, updates still are available to Drupal sites. You don't see that unable to connect to update server error. Yep. Yes, another question. Uh, if you have uh, authenticated, then And uh, you want to have the non-authenticated non traffic still working, but disable a couple of regions, something like the login uh, block or something like that. Is it possible? You, you can't really handle uh, custom dynamic pages um, with a CDN uh, if the if the origin's offline. Uh, and I'm, I'm not sure a way that you could but safely not, do that. Not the dynamic page, the oh. same page, like the Drupal front page, for example. That has a login uh, block on the side, a uh, user login block. And when your server goes down, mm -hmm. maybe a way to disable this login block. Maybe uh, um, interact uh, programmatically, something like that. So okay. So, so, so to, repeat, to repeat the question, and um, the question is, if you have authenticated traffic and the origin goes down or can't, it can't access it, could you fall back to having static content? And the answer is yes. You could do that with custom VCL uh, by doing something where you detect, uh, you would initially detect that the user has a session, and then you would say, I want to pass this back to the back end. And then what you would get the error or failure to connect. And then you could put request handling in there that says, even if you had a session, uh, you could tell Varnish to retry the request and mark it in a way where it basically says, uh, I got an error trying to handle this cus this dynamic page from origin. And then when it goes back into the VCL to process it again, you could have a rule in there where even if they have a session, uh, if the original origin request failed, uh, you could say, uh, you could treat it as a cached request, probably strip out the session, and then they would get an anonymous page uh, instead of an error. Can you also do that with a load time uh, threshold? Uh, there, I think there are thresholds set in the request, the origin configurations. So the way we explain this is is a very advanced feature of, of stale if error, which is a proposed HTTP standard. And the way Fastly does this is we have health checks. So we'll check we'll check whether your origin is responding within um, within a defined timeout. Um, so uh, so I guess you could make the origin fail health checks if it's not responding within a, within a few seconds, uh, and and then go through this error mechanism. Sometimes you get hits from all of the world, but most of the users come from that country because it's a language. 
Would you say that um, it's still useful in any way to use CDNs, whether Fastly or, or Amazon? Absolutely. Uh, it's for multiple reasons. Uh, one is uh, unless you're deploying HTTP2 to your origin servers, it provides that for users, which accelerates their page load times. It provides um, faster TLS negotiation because uh, odds are Fastly's boxes are going to negotiate faster than your origin servers would. Um, three, unless your origin servers support um, IPv6, in a lot of regions, mobile phones prefer IPv6, and there's usually a 20 to 30 percent overhead for going through the carrier grade NAT uh, for v4 to go to the website. So if you can make your site available over IPv6, you can minimize load times, and Fastly can do that as well for you, even if your origin servers don't support it. Uh, and also, it's just infrastructure you don't have to manage then. Even, even if the Fastly or if any CDN uh, point of presence is outside of that particular country. Uh, so the interesting thing about, about the internet has changed quite a lot over the last 20 years. And we, um, all, all our servers are hosted next or in or close to internet connection, internet, um, internet connection points. Um, so uh, all traffic in, in Netherlands goes through M6, for example. Oh, there's DKIX in, in Germany. So um, the internet is very well connected, especially for your origins. So it, it's less of a problem. If, if you're in Germany, then it's going to be fast if, if you're using that. If you only have one pop node in Germany, it's still going to be relatively fast, and it will be infrastructure you don't have to manage. And you, and you also can choose your uh, configuration with Fastly to only use certain regions of points of presence as well, like if you just want to do Europe or just want to do North America. Uh, however, one reason that you might want to actually have advertised points of presence around the globe is for mitigating attacks. Because uh, with any cast routing and GeoDNS, it ensures that uh, um, attackers that are trying to access your website are still routed to their local point of presence. So let's say you have a botnet in Russia, uh, and they are being used to try and attack your website. They're all going to be targeted at points of presence that Fastly operates closer to the attackers and not on the points of presence that your customers are accessing the site through. So then you can shut down the attack um, at a point that doesn't even ex exist in your normal traffic flow, uh, well before it touches your origin systems, well before it touches the actual caches that your customers are using. that on a Kamai's network that uh, they offer for uh, this specific, specific case uh, different nodes, edge nodes, uh, caching servers, let's say, uh, per ISP. I mean, they have on, uh, one on, uh, for Vodafone, one for free network, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that actually has something like that to accommodate uh, the local country traffic. Um, so Fastly, uh, we're generally in internet exchanges, but we we pay with local providers. So we'll we'll have fast connections to uh, to big ISPs, for example. Mm -hmm. Which which is really what Akamai is probably doing. They're probably saying a peering agreement with um, the ISP. Yeah, most probably. I mean, to avoid the uh, getting out uh, of the local network, local country uh, internet, and using backbone. <laughs> something that possibly might add you know, to the additional service that they already have. It's already there. Yeah. yeah we already pay. Um, and when we're always working on, on improving connections. Um, sometimes uh, sometimes there are cable cuts on the internet. We notice things are going a bit slower before between different countries. So we have to route, route around. Route and uh, calculate the best uh, path. Mm -hmm. Calculate the best path, exactly. But yeah, it's, it's in Fastly's interest to peer as well because it reduces the cost of transport. Yeah, they actually peered with our ISP for Group.org uh, when they got added to the Seattle Internet Exchange. And Fastly, I was emailed Fastly support and was like, hey, do you guys have a peer up here? Would it be possible to peer with our, with our provider? And they were like, yeah, sure, you know, get us in contact if they're not. And a week later, we were peered. Yeah, there's, there's usually a mutual incentive to peer because both parties don't have to pay for transport over the backbone at that point. Should we go for a question in the back? Still reach the back end of the origin of the code, and how do you help as well with your 
about which uh, quantity of computer it uses, because I believe that they still have to reach the royalty as well, because if not, you're going to be playing many the minutes. Sure. Can you develop on those two questions? <laughs> Sure, I'll jump in there. So, um, so you've seen some of the VCL already. So VCL is kind of like a, a little programmatic language. You can do if, then, else, lots of rules, lo regular expressions. Um, and you can use that to either whitelist. So this is how your URL string is going to go. Only let uh, URLs and query parameters which match this to go to, through to the origin. Um, or to blacklist if you have some traffic which looks like which looks malicious, you can you can match it with your with your code, and that way you could, you could block traffic at the edge, and it wouldn't have to hit hit your origin. Um, and, and we would we could help you with that. And there was a second question which I amazingly forgot. Uh, it was about how it can help with authenticated users. Authenticated users. Well, thank you, users. Uh, it's quite tricky because uh, your hit ratio will be quite a bit, little bit lower if you have lots of authenticated authenticated users. Um, but by using um, by using a CDN rather than going over the general internet, it will still be faster if you have to go back to the origin uh, because we'll ha we, have, we optimize our routing over our network. So your user will go, over, will con contact in Sydney, will contact on Sydney Pop, which will go over our network close to your origin and, and then back over the network. So it will still be faster um, even if we don't have it cached. Uh, and also for mitigating attacks, um, Fastly offers a platinum level of service you can add to a plan. Uh, that they will d help dive in and um, even help you write rules to uh, to trap uh, attack traffic uh, and then um, and then black hole it well before it reaches your origin. We don't like to say too much about DDoS attacks, but uh, last year there was a state level sponsored attack against GitHub, which you might want to Google for videos. And just uh, it's. It is VCL, so uh, you know any sort of regex that you want to do. Uh, you know, if you're able to kind of pin down some sort of pattern that you're seeing with your attack, you can throw it in, and and you know within was it a fifth of a second uh, at that block. Exactly. At edge, so very very powerful for that. Right, so the, the reference to master VCL was um, was kind of in depth about how fast these structures it's, it's VCL, uh, which is we run a little bit of VCL before customers VCL runs. But I, I guess uh, you guys could talk about how, how you work on your VCL configs. Well, the uh, um, so it, I think the question is about how fastly picks the right VCL to run against a site, or I'm just trying to make sure I'm ready answering the right question. Well, rather the question was rather uh, if you have multiple customers. Well, in their case, they mm -hmm. have multiple customers, and I guess each of them has control of his own pieces of VCL. Mm -hmm. How it is integrated in the whole VC because I, I heard master, so I thought, okay, there is a master VCL at the Fastly, and then Drupal uh, Org has their own VCL, or probably another sub VCL for a different reason. Yeah, the, the, oh, ma yeah. The, the master VCL is very small. It's it's not, well, at least my understanding of it um, is that it's not designed to do very much. Uh, uh, mostly, Fastly is trying to route the request to your VCL, right. uh, which can happen, uh, I'm aware of at least two ways of doing that on Fastly. Uh, the main way of doing it on Fastly as a general customer is uh, you put in a domain name and you validate your control of the domain, and then anytime traffic comes into Fastly's edge and matches the domains you control, it will be handled by one of your services, which a service on, on uh, Fastly corresponds to a VCL or rules configuration. Uh, the other way that's offered, uh, which is only used for a handful of customers, is called IP pinning, uh, where if you handle lots and lots of domains, uh, you can get certain IP addresses that automatically go to your service, where any time traffic comes into that IP, uh, it's going to go to your VCL. So the question was, the question was, um, the, the Fastly server cache nodes, is the address list public? It's like, yes, the address is, pub is public. Uh, we have an API. You can download it. Uh, we update the IP address, address list uh, way before we start using the IP addresses. 
Um, so you can have like a cron job which updates your firewall to only allow accesses from, from FAT, for example. Alternatively, you could use the uh, TLS to origin where you put a certificate in for Fastly and then it validates that it's coming from Fastly cryptographically. So it's that for the local Drupal to Fastly and Fastly can uh, use a different certificate, TLS or yes. whatever, to serve the client. Yes, you can generate your own certificates uh, for the connection between Fastly and your origin if you want to. So it doesn't matter if it is our root uh, certificates or just, you know, internal ones. It's, um, it, needs it needs yeah. to be signed and you would basically do something I that's called, sign, let's say. yeah, you would, you would create your own like mini CA mm -hmm. and you could sign one for Fastly and sign one for your origin it's and then, yes. And it, it's sort of self-signed in that way. Uh, and then you could tell the origin to trust exactly. things that you've signed and then give Fastly the certificate that you've signed. And then every time Fastly connects to your origin, like Nginx, for example, uh, or Apache, uh, really almost every HTTP server supports this at this point, uh, then it can validate that it's coming from Fastly because Fastly has the certificate that you gave it. Um, can you actually go into origin configuration? We can show yeah, this. Let me pull up some. Because like there have been a few questions about timeouts for origin configuration, monitoring for origin configuration, encryption to origin. Yeah, so here here's that domain list that we were talking about. So um, this is the actual Drupal code. Yeah, this is the actual uh -huh. production config here. So most of it's actually handled by uh, start.drupal.org here. And as we were moving services over, we were individually adding them. But the, the wildcard picks up mm -hmm. most everything. Um, and then over here on the origin side, we have our, please be nice to these IPs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. you, should, you should validate that traffic is coming from, yeah, from Fastly. From Fastly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so here's that um, configuration. This is the new interface that I'm not as familiar with. But yeah, you can, you can set up in the screen the CI certificate for yeah. self-signing. The, the other way to do it um, to, uh, an another thing you could implement if you wanted, if you didn't care about validating that it's coming from Fastly, but you just wanted to have the connection encrypted and trusted, uh, you could use Let's Encrypt on your origin servers. You can re it comes with like a cron job that refreshes the certificate. And then uh, what'll happen is that Fastly already has um, all of the major routes uh, trusted for connecting to origin. And so that would allow you to run your origin um, cr uh, in with an encrypted connection that would be uh, resistant to man-in-the-middle attacks. Yeah, but uh, should I uh, revalidate or re-enter the uh, certificate, the let's encrypt certificate details on, uh, on Fastly as well? I, I mean, it, once uh, I uh, refresh the certificate. It's probably a little uh, too in-depth here to go into okay, okay. Right. certificate hierarchies and um, client certificates and how the validation occurs. Totally understood. But it, it is possible to do on here. Yes. Um, and then another uh, thing that came up was the logging. So here's an example. Uh, we logged to S3, and we also logged to our own internal uh, our syslog server here. So we can set the log format in a way that we want to accept, and it'll send the traffic over to our uh, running log host. And that's encrypted as well. Yeah. And that this has a actually a different insert attached to it. So I'll make sure we verify there. Uh, and then the custom BCL, so uh, maybe this will help shed some light on that question about how that works. Uh, we have a main sort of production BCL that has additional includes of other BCLs that we have, uh, that, and I believe that gets sort of routed by the master BCL that you were describing. Right. Yeah. So these get combined into, into one, one BCL. So w when I view the actual BCL that gets compiled on Fastly's end, that's the BCL we were looking at before, but this is the individual sort of I include an ACL. Uh, we set up just kind of the production logic, but it also includes things like redirecting, some redirect logic that we have, and some other uh, like blocks that we have in place, and, and ways to handle 503, and things like that. And Fastly versions the VCL uh, on the service so that as you go through iterations, they're all on there, so that if you ever need to fall back, you can do that. Um, if you put in rules without writing custom VCL, you can still see the VCL it generates. So uh, you're, there's not a lot of vendor lock-in either in terms of uh, if you wanted to take your VCL and walk away, um, you'd be able to mostly push it into Varnish. You might have to make a few tweaks for modern, uh, for like more modern versions of Varnish, like Varnish 4, but uh, it, you can mostly port the configuration over. So for example, this is the one sort of thing that we have in the UI 
SSI here that gets translated into VCL uh, if I look at the actual output. It's just forcing SSL um, for all the requests. And so yeah, then over here in the VCL, there's a force SSL section. It's also a great way to do SSL only for a site because it means that the redirect is generated by Fastly instead of your origin box so that you don't have a lot of delays there uh, for redirecting to the same URL on HTTPS. So it, it makes it easy to do that. I think there's even prefab rules in, in that you can even do for kind of like HTTPS only on Fastly now. Yeah, I believe that's the force SSL that right. I think. Um, so that's like this. Origin on the Apache server and then go to get the return code. They can. You can uh, do that directly to. Uh, you, you can either hand create redirects of your origin and even cache them in Fastly if you yeah. want to as just normal responses, uh, or you can use Varnish itself to generate the redirects if you know there are certain URL patterns mm -hmm. that that redirect. Um, the, um, in terms of redirects and traffic direction, one other use case I wanted to go into that some of our customers use is for the sake of, uh, of uh, SEO search engine optimization. Um, some customers might say run one Drupal site for their blog and then a different Drupal site for their main website, for their .com. Uh, they might even run WordPress for their blog and Drupal for their main site. Uh, and one thing that you want to do for SEO is you want to have it all in the same domain name. Uh, so one thing you can do as a trick in the CDN is you can have in your rules say detect that someone's going to slash blog and then choose a different origin for that uh, and um, even meddle with the host name that it's sending to the origin uh, so that you can simultaneously run multiple websites that are all in the same domain and all of the switching between the different origins can happen in the CDN. And I've, I've had customers which are moving data center or moving to the cloud and that way they can move parts of their website one by one rather than having one big bang switch. Yep. And yeah, that would be very potentially useful for like a Drupal 8 migration of some kind on Drupal.org. We could have parts of the website be routed by Fastly to the Drupal 8 site and integrate with Drupal 7 site or something like that. So it could be useful for that sort of upgrade as well if you're, if you're looking at one of those. So we'll be here. Uh, we'll be here for most of the conference. We have a stand downstairs. You get a nice fasty T-shirt or a nice Pantheon T-shirt, and you already should have Drupal T-shirts. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.